Crimean Bridge will receive critical damage this summer. Russia's air defense is helpless. According to Ukrainian military political observer Alexander Kovalenko, the Crimean Bridge will receive critical damage in the summer of 2024, but this requires appropriate conditions. They involve the creation of a certain passage yard zone, which is currently being formed. A zone is being created over the Crimean Peninsula, which I call a passage yard. Russian air defense systems are being destroyed. All this is necessary so that our weapons can reach the Crimean Bridge with less risk, he told RBC Ukraine. According to the analyst, this is confirmed by attacks on airfields in Zankoy and Belbek in particular, on the locations of anti-aircraft missile regiments on Ai Petri and Tarkankut. As the expert notes, the main target there was rather not the occupier's aviation, but the S-400 anti-aircraft missile system. Now everything is being done to minimize the effectiveness of Russian air defense in Crimea. As soon as this is done, we should expect attacks on the bridge, Kovalenko said. Recall the Simferopol region and the city of Alushtar came under rocket fire on May the 24th in Crimea, illegally occupied by Russia. According to the so-called governor of the region, Sergei Aksenov, as a result of the strike, there were deaths. Two random passers-by. He also stated that in the Alushta area, hits were recorded on an empty commercial facility. In addition, the Russian Federation claims that three ATA CMS missiles were shot down over the peninsula and naval aviation destroyed three unmanned Ukrainian boats in the Black Sea. At the same time, Ukrainian telegram channels write that the target of the attack near Alushta was a communications facility in one of the Russian military units in the region. According to the partisans, the communications center of the Russian invaders in the village of Solnechnogorsko was hit. Later, the Crimean Wind Channel wrote about a fire in the FSB military unit in the village of Semidvorye, which is located near Alushta. In addition, in the morning, information appeared that at least six ATA CMS ballistic missiles hit the communications center of the radar and air defense forces of the Russian Federation. The Ukrainian army finally received shells to stop the Russians near Kharkiv. Ukrainian soldiers in the Kharkov region finally received shells to stop Russian troops. Reuters reports this. The agency recalled that Ukraine's defenders were paralyzed for months due to a shortage of artillery shells and other weapons as the US Congress delayed billions of dollars in military aid. Russian forces exploited their advantage at the front as they pushed forward on the Eastern Front. With Congress belatedly approving a $61 billion aid package last month, Ukrainian gunners say the crippling deficit is beginning to ease. Local residents say the fighting in the northern Kharkiv region is more intense than in Bakhmut, which Russia captured last year and reduced to ruins. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Their infantry continues to advance. We continue to fight off attacks. When possible, we destroy them. Previously, we were stationed in the Bakhmut area. Now we have been transferred here. It's much hotter here. There, we didn't have shells. Here, at least, we have shells. They started to be brought in. We have something to work on. A gunner of the 92nd Separate Assault Brigade of Ukraine operating a howitzer told the agency. The military is reportedly confident that the supply of shells will continue as everyone understands the importance of holding the front. If we can demonstrate now that we are capable of stopping a large-scale enemy offensive on Kharkov and the Kharkov region in such an extreme situation, then the enemy will not dare to think about attacking Kiev, Chernihiv region, Sumy or Poltava region. The commander of one of the artillery units told Reuters, Russian forces recently began a summer offensive grabbing several villages on Ukraine's northeastern frontier near the city of Kharkiv as they attempt to break through a weakened Ukrainian front line. US fears Russian counter space weapons may attack other satellites. The United States Space Command suggests that the satellite launched by Russia last week is a weapon capable of attacking other satellites in low Earth orbit. According to a United States Space Command representative in a conversation with journalists, Russia deployed this new counter space weapon into the same orbit as a US government satellite. We have observed nominal activity and assess it is likely a counter space weapon presumably capable of attacking other satellites in low Earth orbit, Pentagon Press Secretary Major General Pat Ryder has claimed. This involves the deployment of at least nine satellites in low Earth orbit, including Cosmos 2576, 
which is described as a type of Russian military inspector spacecraft. These satellites were launched into space by the Russian Soyuz rocket from the Plesetsk Cosmodrome on May the 16th. This mix of military and civilian payloads was totally unexpected. Never seen that before on a Russian launch, said Bart Hendricks, a longtime analyst tracking Russia's space program. An American official familiar with the intelligence data explained that US services anticipated the launch of Cosmos 2576 and informed allies of their assessment of the satellite before its deployment in space. The US intelligence report said that Cosmos 2576 resembled previously deployed Russian anti-satellite payloads from 2019 and 2020. Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov rejected the Pentagon's claims as misinformation. I don't think we should be responding to every fake coming from Washington, he told journalists. The Russian space program is developing smoothly and includes launches of spacecraft for various purposes, including those that solve the issues of strengthening our defense capabilities, the diplomat said. However, he reiterated that Moscow consistently opposes the deployment of strike weapons in low Earth orbit. The Americans may say whatever they want, but Russia's policy on the issue will not change, Ryabkov stressed. If the US really wanted to achieve security in space, it would have reconsidered its destructive approach and accepted Russia's proposal to develop a treaty on the prevention of an arms race in outer space, he said.